Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Monday, or no, sorry, Tuesday morning. Because of that bank holiday, I'm now thinking it's Monday. I hope you are, well, hope you're looking forward to a good week, whatever it is that you're up to this week. Obviously, um, there's only a couple more games, really, of club football this week. Got the Conference League tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow. And obviously, Sassay's Champions League final. Uh, Dortmund, Real Madrid. So, still a couple of games of football left before we get to uh, international football this summer. But talking of some international footballers. Look at that transition. That's outrageous. Uh, we are talking Danny Olmo and we are talking Joe Roden. So one in, one out kind of vibe in this video. So we talk about those guys, bit of detail. And uh, yeah, just want to say though, if you're new, give us a subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. And uh, I'm going to start with Mr. Danny Olmo himself. And uh, obviously, backstory for Danny Almo, if you're not really too aware as to what the situation has been leading up until what I'm about to talk about, we know that Danny Almo is uh, he's considering leaving Leipzig. He's not desperate or anything like that, but he's considering leaving Leipzig. He has um, he has a lot of interest, like a lot, you know, from Barcelona, from Manchester City. Um, I think even I've seen like you buy Munich and stuff like that being keen on him. So you're going to see there's there's people of interest, uh, sorry, teams of interest for Danny Armour. So Cameron Sport, who said that, and this is, I find this, I, I'm going to laugh about this and you will, but we'll, we'll, we'll get through it anyway. But Barcelona consider Spurs rivals in their attempt to sign Danny Olmo. The midfielder is happy at RB Leipzig and will only consider a transfer for a project he deems exciting. Um, where, are, where are Barcelona getting that money from? Because this is a guy that's not going to cost, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes. It's going to, guy that's going to cost around 60, give or take, right? Before someone cries. Actually, it's going to be 61, Andrew. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Um, I, I don't know where they're getting that money from. I really don't. Um, is it down the back of the sofa? Is it in their little piggy bank and they've got to break it open? Barcelona are broke. They've not got that kind of money to be spending. They're in that kind of debt. Um, Look, I like Danny Armo. I like Danny Armo a lot. And he is... He's not a... St the way I look at it, he's not a star yet, but he's a star in the making. Like, he's going to be. The issue that we have is... there's Because there's a few of you, and I am part of these few, that uh, I'm quite sold on Ebra Echeze. I'm on that hype. I've always been on that hype. And... You know, for a while, I was like, nah, it'll be Neto. And then after Neto's injuries, I was like, nah, it's going to be Eze for me. And then Eze had a really great end to the season. And then Danny Olmo popped up, and I was like, oh, I can't keep switching. I've got to be loyal at some point. And I've always said, if we wind up with a Danny Olmo and not an Eze, I won't be upset. It's not to say Eze's rubbish, and it's not to say that Ol Olmo is levels above him. What I'm saying is, we need them. We need these sort of players. Both are very solid. Both would make us better. The way, you know, I always look at it. Does he make us better? Yes. Does it make us considerably better? Considerably better? Yes. This is one of those. And, and as I was saying, would they make us better? Yes. And considerably? Yes. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, but you're not signing both. As much as you and I can sit here and we can say Spurs can spend X. We sell this. We could spend X. It's not going to happen. So as much as I sit here and I, and I always go, well, this is exciting, oh, and that's exciting, I always kind of go in with the mindset of, as much as it is, is it realistic to what we should expect? Signing one can be, signing both is not. That's just, you know, you're living in, you're living in cuckoo land, as Mr. Roy Keane would say. So I like Omo. Would he make us better? Yes. Would he make us considerably better? Yes. Will it happen? I don't know. I really don't know. And, it, you know, look, we don't know what happens with the City Chargers. And I'm not going to be sitting here, you know, tinfoil hat on, you know, holding up things, waiting for the lightning to hit me so I can talk about conspiracies. I don't know what's going to happen with their Chargers. I really don't. It looks bad, but we've also been waiting a while. So does, yeah, because we know City are interested in Danny Armo. You know, City may move off of Jack Grealish. They may move off of Bernardo Silva. And if they do then you can expect Danny Almo to be a part of that list of players that you know, they're keen on. For Barca, Barca are going to be... Barca are one of those teams that will go, look, we really like your player. 
and you go, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, oh, you're going to buy them? And they're like, you're like, they're like, we are. And, they, and you're like, oh, lovely, nice. And they go, can you give us three months? And you're like, uh, well, I need to replace him. And there's only three months left of the window, so I don't, can you not do any earlier? And they're like, oh, all right. Just under three months. And you're like, no, what? It's because they can't do it. They can't afford it for their financial fair play. They have to move money around. And it, yeah, it's not, yeah. So if we want Olmo and we want to fight Barca, you want to be out the gates quick because they can't handle that kind of pace. Right, I want to talk about Joe Roden. And um, Joe on loan at Leeds, obviously losing uh, on Sunday in the championship playoff final 1-0 to Southampton. So congrats, obviously, to Southampton and Kyle Walker-Peters coming up. Joe is a guy who's got one year left on his deal. He's had a really good loan spell. Like, I, you know, every week I used to do on a Tuesday a loan roundup, right? And I normally started with Joe Roden because he had the best week. And it was like nine times out of ten I started with Joe Roden because he had such a good week. And I'm not going to sit here and say it's his fault they didn't go up because, I mean, they are 90-odd points, you know, and... These things just happen in football. It, 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 it's cruel at times, you know, but hey-ho. And he's a great loan spell. We know Leeds are keen on him. But we also know Leeds have something like $190 million they've got to pay um, outright already uh, to, to other transfer instalments. So, like, in terms of financial fair play... Leeds are sitting way past that line. You know, they, they're they going to have to sell. You know, is that a Somerville? Is that an Archie Gray? Um, is that a Perot? Is that a Bamford? I don't know what it is, but going up would have fixed quite a few of those problems. Staying in the championship isn't helping those problems. It's, it's probably making it just as bad as it could be. So with Joe Roden, I don't actually see him at Leeds unless they can fluke their way around some things, you know, get loads of sales in. But I don't see him staying at Leeds. I see what this report says. It came from Mel Sport, who said that Premier League clubs are monitoring the situation of Spurs' defender Joe Roden following impressive loans well at Leeds United. And I always said, if Leeds United weren't the team that were going to buy him, you know, let's say they didn't come up, which this is what the situation is we're in now, that I would expect teams who have come up or who are, you know, not like a top team in the Premier League, but, you know, somewhere between that mid-table downwards, I think he would be a guy who has a ton of interest. We knew last season they talked about, you know, the teams, they're interested in Jaffa Tenganga that are in the Premier League. You know, this should be nothing different. You know, you think of the teams that went up of Leicester, of Ipswich and Southampton, you never know. Someone in there might want them. Obviously, you've got... Um, Leicester's manager looks like he's off to Chelsea. I know McKenna has stayed at Ipswich. But, you know, what about the teams like... What do, what do Forrest do? Do Forrest cash in on Murillo and then spend some of that money on Joe Roden because of financial fair play? Yeah, they could do that. You know, what do... I'm trying to think who else is sort of down in that half, you know. What happens with some teams that are down there, maybe have to sell some players or who have get a really good offer, you know. What happens to Everton with Jared Branthwaite? Do they go for a Joe Roden? It's not out of the realms of possibilities. So I see him being moved about 15 million, I think is about here and it's somewhere within that realm. I think it's about right. And I'm happy for him because if he does get that move to the Premier League side, he's more than deserved it. He's more than earned it. And, you know, good for him, you know. But anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like on the video. If you'd hit me in the comment section down below, your thoughts of his about Danny Armo and my sort of general attitude towards uh, an Olmo deal as well as the information on Joe Roden. I know your thoughts and things about both of those because that's a little bit more now coming into this season. It's fascinating. Obviously, subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, in the video, I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.